Um, it was raised about criteria, uh, not criteria, about how you demonstrate transparency in the way you do. And it wasn't a criticism, mm. but um, one of our staff from the finance division noted to risk and audit that um, we can make some improvements to the way that we deliberate um, yeah. our and report out mm -hmm. our decisions. Mm -hmm. I think you and Kesh and Tapura did an awesome job and look at the amazing um, work we were able to get out. But if it's been raised in um, risk and audit, um, sure. then it's worth pursuing to make sure that we do the Yep. So you aware of that? Yes, thank you. Yeah, I, I did read that in the report, um, and I'll have a quick answer, and then I'll, I'll ask Sandra to um, to follow this up. But uh, this is one of many allocation committees. Um, most of our committees do follow this procedure um, through various iterations, and then come back for information. I think there's only one, am I right, that comes back for uh, for ratification from a, a bigger committee. I know, and it wasn't just this committee that they were eyeing up. It yeah, was, that's, yeah, was that's the right. Process in general, yeah. and I've sat on them like you and yeah. many years as well. So, and and Dave uh, has also sat on them. So a number of us had some comments to yep. see what is best practice in terms of how you report. How you, the, the criteria is one thing, but you've still got some reporting about how you measured, how you weighed all that up, how yeah. you came to your various distributions, not so, looking back but looking forward. Yeah, so we're, well, I'm well aware of the discussion yesterday, oh, sorry, and um, uh, there was going to be the um, take it offline, Councillor Dave brought up some very valid points yesterday around context and the types of organisations that we're working with. Mm -hmm and around the transparency. So it's a good point, Mayor Paula, so we'll, t we'll take that into account so and make sure that we're consistent. Absolutely, I think the recommendation yeah. was to involve Chair or Deputy Chair of this committee, Community Development, and yourself, Councillor McPherson, to, yeah, so Thank just you. we're gonna make sure that this is consistent. Yep. Question, another ah. question. Um, in terms of um, post-COVID, COVID-related response, versus, you know, as you say, pre-existing challenges. I'm trying to think of the way to word this. Does the, if a, well, let's just be blunt. If it was something like Clarence Street Theatre that has a combination of a big hit due to COVID, but some underlying sustainability issues that they were, address, they were addressing or trying to address, can they get some money from this fund and also seek other support from council? Should council be willing to support them? Or is it one or other? That's a good question. Um, I think that's really for council to decide. Uh, and generally, we we don't encourage people to have a couple of bites at the cherry. Um, but um, <clears throat> it's something we just might want to give a bit of thought to. Because um, mm. you are right. What you're saying is, you know, if there's unique circumstances for a whole bunch of reasons, but uh, yeah, I think we'll have to give that some thought. Yeah, if, if I can speak, um, Councillor Ewan and I have, have, have talked about this quite a lot. Mm. Um, this is a COVID fund, and they must very, very clearly show us no, the I get effect that. of, yeah, yeah, exactly, but um, so I see this in isolation. Um, yeah, it probably will affect that. But, it, but it is important because if, some, if somebody applies to this and then that, um, precludes them. It precludes them from applying for an, uh, some, uh, some additional support. Yeah. Then that could be a problem. So we need to be quite clear about that. I'm not. I'm not saying we should get dub give people a chance to double dip per se, but we might want to use other mechanisms to provide temporary support outside of this fund. I Sand think you, un you understand Sand what I'm saying. Yes, yeah, eh? Sandra might yeah. be able to provide some. But the reasons so. for that might be quite different. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. exactly. All right, let's, let's start right. with that. So the Sorry. applications are taken on definitely on a case-by-case -case basis um, because each request to the COVID fund is quite unique and different. And my understanding is that the COVID fund is seen directly to support circumstances that have arisen out of COVID and have no impact <coughs> at all on any other grant that organisation could be getting from another avenue um, through council, like the multi-year fund or the single-year grant fund. 
um, because if you look through the list, you'll recognise that several of those organisations are already mm. being supported through the multi-year fund, but that's for their BAU. Okay. And so what we're doing through that COVID fund is supporting um, all those emergency needs that have arisen um, to date. Does that answer your question? Well, yeah. I think it just needs a little bit of an extra nuance around some, some how we talk about them to the public. Righto. Um, Councillor, sorry, is that all your questions, Mayor Paula? Yes, thank you. Thank you. Councillor Geller. Yeah, but that, if in doubt, presumably you have the the, the discretion to bring it back to this, this mm. council, because in a way... Forget it, whether it's Clarence Street or whoever it is, Mayor Paula's sort of kind of question kind of started to worry me because I thought the whole point of this was to ring fence and be quite clear. And if there's an issue of an organisation having bigger issues, then that needs to track into us in a, in a totally through a different door. Um, and what I'm worried about is you have an organisation who run their affairs correctly, have made the sacrifices, made the right decisions strategically, need the help, I get that, but, I, but I, I'm just worried that a group that may or may not have made the right, you know, historical decisions, uh, and obviously COVID makes it worse, but it doesn't, Yeah. you know, it's a Band-Aid stuff. Yeah, and again, I'll, 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 I'll speak before the staff do, but um, this is purely an emergency fund for, uh, from COVID. So would um, you contemplate, sorry, and, you know, this is asking you in case, would you yeah. contemplate if suddenly it was... A little bit at the boundaries of, of bringing it back, you know, because this is public money, of bringing it back to this council in pink, confidential, whatever. Um, if if yeah, there was any, it's just I'm trying to remove any yeah, yeah, doubt. Yeah. That's all. I'm not precluding what council may decide. Yeah, um, look, there's, there's a couple of bodies of work involved here, mm. uh, Councillor Gallagher. Um, one of them is this emergency COVID fund, mm. the other one is I'm uh, hoping to work with. Creative Waikato and uh, the arts community mm. about a whole theatre ecosystem, if, if mm. this is what the question's around. Mm. Um, but we're trying to very much ring fence each application as it happens. Um, so I hope that gives you... And be mindful uh, of equity, a degree of equity with organisations. Absolutely. Sort of yeah, totally. It's not going to be the yeah, squeakiest sure. wheel gets Thank the, Sorry. No, the no, most uh, money. So can, does that can, I, can I give some level of assurance to Councillor mm. Martin? Um, when... We, as staff, when we get an application, we do do due diligence. We don't just hand it to Mark, Councillor Mark and Councillor Kesh to say, hey, they asked us for this. Mm. We actually do do all that follow-up, and by adding those extra clauses around have they received wage subsidy, are they going to be providing us for two years of accounts, we will actually be able to look at those financials and ascertain what kind of financial position they were in pre-COVID pre -COVID. and actually do that assessment. Okay, thank you. Um, Councillor Gallagher, if it would help, uh, happy to put a condition in there that if it is likely to, like you say, fly too close to the edge or overflow, we can bring it back to a finance committee for a decision on that. If it's beyond the scope. Well, well, if it's beyond the scope, then you probably say no. But, but certainly, mm. I just want, I want you to have the option. If suddenly it's a little bit like that, I don't know whether you flick it into our finance committee. Mm. It's just, I'm just looking for, for fairness and equity. I think you, you've got it. Mm. Uh, mm. Because obviously, put it this way: if you come aware that an organisation has deep financial problems, yeah. I assume that may or may not come to finance or, or to council through a different. You direct them through a different door. Yep. All right. Well, with that, Councillor Wilson. Can, can I oh, can yep. I suggest the um, consideration, if that were the case, be given to the time lag? Because um, we're yeah. conscious that the applications come in and we've responded quite cl quickly <coughs> within a two or three. Week time frame back to the organisation. If you're going to hold that application and take it to a committee, then you no, might I think be Councillor Martin's it. saying if the if the allocation committee say gave them 20 grand because it was COVID related, right. but then they had deeper systemic issues, and you know maybe the committee wouldn't decide to give them 20 grand. That the other matter, um, there is another avenue, right. and we have had these okay. one-off things before where organisations write to the chair of the committee or to the mayor's office or, or whatever, and then, um, you know, council consider it on its merit separately, but 
I think we need to be a bit careful we don't get this fund confused with other matters. Yeah. Yeah. Councillor Wilson. Yeah, thanks, uh, Chair Mark. So uh, I'm quite um, focused on this issue. Yep. Uh, and um, uh, my question to staff is please assure me that if there are protected species or pet rocks that we want to somehow look after and don't meet the criteria of one avenue, that whatever avenue it's managed to be managed into, that at least it's the entire council that gets to decide that. I mean, for, for example, uh, if in fact uh, a particular applicant does not meet the guidelines that we've all worked hard to set up under the emotional and, and appropriately so COVID name, um, where <coughs> that if we, you know, if some of the elected members still want to push that, that at least wherever they push it to has to be a meeting of the entire council. Uh, I just need that assurance because yeah, that would definitely reflect. That's what I was suggesting, Councillor Wilson. So right. whether it's the Finance Committee or Council itself, it right. would be, um, you know, the, the full Council and depending what Mungai Māori on that particular body as well. So, cool. so it wouldn't just be a group of three councillors or anything Thank like you. that. Thank you. Wonderful. Right, so uh, if there's no more questions, uh, I've put the motion. It's been seconded by Councillor Wilson. Um, I'm not actually going to speak on that because I'm... Conscious of the time, I think people. Are... Chair Mark, I had a question. <laughs> Sorry, Sarah. Uh, all good. Um, yeah. I was just wanting to get a little bit more clarification around um, the the criteria when it talks about um, organisations that contribute to the well-being of Hamiltonians. I was just interested: is there was that well-being um, as a very broad, I guess. Um, word in terms of what it can encompass, you know, economic, environment, social, cultural, it, are we looking at all of those things in terms of um, what, sh what these organisations um, do or offer to the community? Yeah. I'm going to give yeah. that one to Lance. So my understanding is yes. I believe that the first set of criteria were specifically targeted towards social service organisations, being their emergency response and being them care and food packages. The idea is that the um, balance of the fund remaining is um, broadened to include organisations outside of that social service sector. Um, to include the, the cultural, the economic and um, the environment, but still being COVID-related. Okay. And in regard to the other part of it, um, just also some clarification. Uh, it talks, hold on, it says um, reduced ability due to restrictions that have been put in place um, during the alert levels. So is that, um, would, would that be just you know, um, organisations which weren't able to get revenue uh, because they couldn't, you know, put on performances or that kind of thing? Or is it also that um, they have had reduced revenue from less donations for because they couldn't have their appeals or, um, or even that donors have kind of dried up because of financial situations? How, to, to what extent is that, I guess... Um, yeah, what what's the extent of that um, provision there? My understanding it's all of the above um, that you've that you've stated there, but again, it would be on a co case by case um, application process. So each case would be different. So all those okay. different kind of nuances then, occur. Okay, so it's quite broad. Yeah. Um, the, the last thing was just going back to um, some of Councillor uh, Martin's comments. Is it just a given that if an um, organisation is in a bad financial position where, you know, it's kind of potentially putting money into a black hole, um, that, that that's taken into account and um, in terms of 
consideration. So just beyond looking at, you know, um, whether it's COVID related or not, but actually if they're just in too bad of a situation to, um, for the risk to be too big to assess. Yes. Thank you. Thank you, Sarah. Good questions. Okay, look, I, I will uh, just very quickly uh, kick off debate if there's no more questions, uh, having moved it and had it seconded by Ewan. Um, just because that money is there does not mean to say we intend to go out and spend all the lolly. Mm. It is there because uh, it's an available fund which comes as a part of a bigger fund. Um, and what we're looking at is the parameters of our contribution to that fund. So I, I will make it loud and clear right now um, that just because it's there doesn't mean to say um, there's a huge grant to be spent. It is there to be available in um, needs, well, in desperate needs, basically, and it's quite a distinct thing. Uh, Mayor Paula. Put on record um, our thanks to you and Cash and to Porter for the work that you did uh, when we were all locked down um, to distribute money where it was needed most in the community at that time. I think this makes sense to me. It's a natural progression from that to the um, first stages of real recovery because I think we know that community need is going to go on um, for quite some time in different forms. So it makes sense that we dealt with the immediate um, basic needs of people in our city, food, shelter, safety, in the short term, and as government starts to um, rightfully provide for people long term in that space, we need to move in and look at other ways to help our community. And we know that uh, social organisations, um, small businesses and the like uh, activities have, have suffered, uh, just like we have through loss of revenue again in our own facilities, so too they have suffered. And um, actually, to get a city back up on its feet, we do have to play our part. It's not a humongous amount of money. It's a contribution. It's a, um, you know, a way to en enable and empower people to do the really good work that they're already doing in the community. They just need a little bit of a support at this time to um, be back at pace. So, um, But thank you for the work you did. Um, and thanks to this council for supporting um, so quickly when we were in lockdown, um, the recommendation to provide a fund to the community. And as I'm aware, very few other councils have done things that way. And it has been recognised nationally and internationally as a good thing to do for the community. Okay. And um, as you know, as I spoke to Brazil, two mayors from Brazil who are facing times beyond our imagination compared to what we've had to go through. But they were very grateful for some of the learnings that we had when dealing with COVID, and this was one of them. So thanks again. Thank you, Mayor Paula. Councillor Wilson. Yeah, thanks, uh, Chair uh, Mark. I'm supporting uh, the motion. Um, and in fact, I give uh, a, a deal of thanks to your leadership uh, and the assistance of Lance um, in terms of working with me to try to uh, mitigate some of my, my fears and my concerns. Uh, and I feel we've, where we've ended up is the right place. You know, I don't purport to be a community expert, um, but I, I know people who are, uh, and I'm, I'm prepared to have faith in them, and I think this process enables them to, to do their job. Um, I do feel quite often I'm walking a fine line between what I think is our role in council and, um, and how far we sometimes go. And uh, I'm, I'm sort of at the end of my comfort zone um, and I'm, I'm, I'm bearing up because it's COVID and I'm bearing up because we're in an unusual place, right? But I won't apologise for wanting to make sure that there is a robust process and, and significant accountability. Um, and, and I think this amendment enables that. Um, and I do have faith in Mark, and I might not always agree with Kesh, but I, I have faith in her um, and, and the team they have to make those 
decisions based on the parameters. And actually, when I look at that role, it's not a role I would necessarily volunteer to take. It's somewhat like the mayor, right? Um, the chief executive makes tough decisions, but everybody is angry at the mayor. Um, so y you get the idea. With yeah. responsibility comes... Um, so um, there will be lots of optics on those decisions. But where I get really nervous is when we start to send a signal that we're going to go way beyond that, that we're then going to start looking and sending messages to, to pet projects or, or protected species like theatres who have... Uh, have, have made bad management decisions in the past and got themselves in a mess and have the audacity to claim, oh, it's all COVID, uh, and that we somehow as a council tried to find a way to help them out. Now, I'll save my passionate debate for that for another day, but I send a clear message. If that's done somehow behind closed doors or if that's not done at a full council committee, I'm going to be a really unhappy camper. Thank you, Councillor Wilson. Councillor Pascoe. Yeah, thank you, Chair. And look, I'd also like to recognise the work that you, uh, as Chair, um, Councillor Kish and Mananga Tapora, along with staff, have done in terms of reacting very quickly to the needs of our community. Um, I th I'm quite happy with the uh, motion in the sense that it now creates uh, the right parameters uh, with financial information and questions that we might ask in going forward to make sure that the, um, the remaining funding for other groups who might um, have a need uh, can, can be adequately, um, a adequately provided. It's relatively easy to look at past financial statements and look at their current budgets and cash flows to identify exactly where the need for extra financial funding has arisen. So I don't see that as a particularly onerous exercise going forward. Uh, and if, if the needs for that funding are not COVID-19 related, then we can direct them to other organisations or to this organisation, as somebody uh, eloquently described, through another door to seek uh, appropriate help, but on a different basis rather than it being COVID-19. So, look, I'm quite relaxed that, that, this, that this motion will provide the appropriate safeguards with the right people making those decisions going forward. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Pascoe. Ooh, just snuck in. Councillor Naudi Rowe. I just wanted to um, say thank you and I appreciate the positive comments received um, and uh, echo what I said a few weeks ago. Uh, being uh, on that allocation committee was quite a, a rewarding experience and we got to see firsthand the impact that the fund was making. Um, so I'm looking forward to this next stage. Um, the one um, red flag is that um, I think we will be inundated with applications, and uh, this is uh, not this is you know a defined amount of money, and so the challenge will be how we prioritize um, who gets in first and how we go about about um, achieving that in this process. So yeah, thank you. Thank you, Kish. Um, I don't really have anything more to add actually, and it's getting late, so we'll put this to the board. If we could please, folks. The motion is carried unanimously, noting that Councillor Thompson is voting by audiovisual link. Thank you. All right, appreciate your support, guys, and we'll keep you informed. Now, the... Um, Oh, such an easy day. Let's move on to fenced dog parks, shall we? Uh, let's move on to uh, item number 12, which is on page 60. Oh, a big ma Oh, sorry. Hang on a wee second, guys. I'll just tell you. I'm just changing that. No, I'm noting that change of a recommendation from staff that Maria mentioned earlier. Right. Yeah, we've just got a, a very quick word from governance. Yep, so just noting that with this item there's been a slight change to the recommendation is up on the screen from staff. Um, Maria can explain that as if they did. 
Oh, this is the dog area. I thought we were talking about the last one. Thank goodness. Yeah. It's been a long day. Okay. So, could you explain why? Yes, we'll, we'll get Maria to explain that one if that's all right. Yeah. Yep. Um, so, good afternoon, Chair Mark, uh, Mayor Paula, and elected members. Um, so, the purpose of this report is obviously to inform the committee of options for the delivery of the fenced dog exercise area and to seek approval for the wider community engagement to select the site. Um, now, this particular item has already been through a um, long series <laughs> of events, um, so the change to the recommendation reflects the recommendation that we would have a wider engagement process, so rather than what we did last time, which was targeted to dog owners, that we would um, do a neighbourhood letter drop to um, surrounding residents. There would be more visual representation so that they could see what the proposal would look and feel and we're recommending that the feedback come back to this uh, committee uh, for consideration and decision before we go ahead and install. Okay. And stay, stay. All right, we'll um, pass this on to Councillor O'Leary, please. No. <laughs> <laughs> this is going to be a bun for this one. Um, look, I'll, I'll move, but just, um, did you just mention why the change? That it's so instead of going to Councillor Gallagher's committee for the hearings, it's coming here? Is, yes. So why was that? Did you say that? Was um, I not listening to you? <laughs> so sorry. Um, so we are, um, we are suggesting... Oh, so I, um, if I can help, just because um, it's not a formal consultation as such, so oh, okay. hearings aren't necessarily required. True. Yeah. Okay. okay. Um, I'll move. I'll move. Oh, yes, I've moved. Yep. Oh, have it a second. <laughs> oh, you go ahead, you. Do a Sorry, good it's late in the day. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, is it are we... Are we... All right. Oh, I can't even think of any great puns. Councillor McPherson. Thank you, Councillor Ubuntu. Um, <laughs> that was a rhyme, just for the record. <laughs> Um, Maria, thanks. Um, ju just actually looking at one of your maps, Minot Park, um, and you talked about risks in there, poorly drained in winter. In fact, I think they all have the same risk, yes. so that as long as dogs can swim, it should be all right. <laughs> but apart from that, what if you see your orange area in the aerial shot of Minogue Park, the, sorry, page 65? Yep. What if you move that to the right by even half the length of that and then you're on a slope? Yep. Um, so the and then you don't... The one dogs that can't swim will be able to... <laughs> Stay on high ground. Yeah. <laughs> I think um, the risk remains that getting to any particular site in that area, Minogue Park in general, is, is poorly drained. So it's just flagging that um, the dogs are probably going to enjoy it, but the humans... Um, May not so much. I didn't think it was to exercise the humans, though. <laughs> um, my understanding is that the dogs will enjoy a varied terrain um, and they will enjoy the wet and um, the hill slope as, along with the flat. So it is trying to um, get an area that has a mix of terrains um, and okay. take advantage of the area that is a designated. So, dog. in other words, it is still suitable. Yes. Yep. Even forbid they should okay, land it. thanks. Even yeah, forbid they should land it at Poodle. Right, um, yeah, Councillor Nodu Rowe. Um, thank you. Um, Maria, just a quick question, point 34. It yeah. says option B requires further deferral of 95,000. Um, is this deferral, has it already been identified in the annual plan discussions? Yes. So it's already included? Yes. Okay, cool. Good question, thank you, Kesh. Uh, Mayor Southgate. Thank you. So this isn't going to be a complete review of the Pooches and Park thing. This is just limited to the most appropriate place for the sighting of a fenced dog park. Absolutely. Okay. Those three options. So just those three options. Yeah. What What is the cons consultation going to look like in terms of... And because the issue arose... Oh. Last time, from my understanding, at a local local neighbourhood level, because um, Councillor O'Leary told us at the time that there's been extensive consultation wider than that, which I accept, but obviously the local people hadn't kind of joined the dots 
So what's going to happen in that space? Yeah. So last time um, we took a targeted approach and only targeted dog owners as interested parties. We are taking a broader approach and we will have um, neighbours in the surrounding area will be included in the mix. So we'll have the views of the dog owners, but we'll also have the views of the local um, residents mm. and community. There will be um, more visual representation, as I mentioned, um, so that they will get a sense of what it will look and feel like also. Thank you, Mayor Paula. Any, any more questions? No, I think, thanks. That's great. OK, thanks. thank you. Um, Councillor Hamilton, I'm going to have thanks. a chew on this one. Chair, yeah, I just want to check what we're unleashing here. Oh. Um, <laughs> 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 Point of clarity, yeah, I might need to put an amendment on that we re just received the report. <laughs> oh, don't. Um, no, seriously. Um, Maria, um, is the lake thing now completely off the table? Um, so, yes, we are now going back with the three options, Minogue, Grease Tools and Tohara as site option. So did we get beaten out of that decision or is it was a legitimate justification for us to do that? So in February, um, we held a briefing um, with elected members and... Um, <laughs> no, don't And um, <laughs> we discussed the wider pool, and I understand those briefing notes are on your diligent. Um, and it was, you know, the, the three options before you today were considered the most viable. OK, I feel a little bit collared, but I'll leave it there. Oh. <laughs> I had that one written down. All right, OK, any other questions or bad jokes? No, good. OK, we'll move into debates. Councillor O'Leary, would you like to uh, debate it or, uh, or otherwise? <laughs> OK, thank you. Uh, would you like to uh, reply to your... Nothing? OK, thank you. Any other debates? All right, well, we'll do this by a simple show of hands this time. Are those in favour? Wolf, arf, arf, arf. <laughs> And anyone against with your legs, please? Raise. Right, right. Good. Thank you very much. That is moved and carried, I believe, unanimously. Thank you. Great. Sarah, we hope you wrote those down to tell your child. Right. Moving on to the uh, last event, which is the general manager's report. Sorry to save the best or last, Lance. This is on page 74. <laughs> Item 14. We haven't missed anything else, have we? No? Great. We've got, I just want to say, we've got 17 minutes until we cross the threshold of being the record holding the long um, meeting that Councillor O'Leary holds so far. So, oh, oh, please, no. Oh, please. Someone take him out. Right. Uh, we're up to number 14, Yun, which is, yep, page 74 in Diligent. So, do you wish to speak to it, Lance? Uh, I think it's pretty self-explanatory, um, and apologies for calling councillors XX. Um, it was meant to be th three elected members, I think. I think you've spoken, yeah. Chair Mark, to some elected members. Got yeah, I'll just, I'll just put it out to the group now. Um, this is regards the... Um, yeah, the Rotatuna Village uh, project team. What um, I was going to suggest is that Councillor Kesh and myself make up one of those double Xs, because I'll, I'll take over once Councillor... Kesh heads off to have a, so have a baby. <laughs> yeah, that's right, and we small X. Um, and Councillor Dave and Councillor Rob to make up that, uh, that group. Now, unless anyone else wants to or feels strongly about being on it, um, I'll, I'll be quite happy to put those names in there. Yeah. I'm happy to do that, Chair, but just to clear an interest, that my wife is currently a board member. Welcome, microphone. Nick, which is the North East Community Hub Trust, which has also been involved in working with council on the Rotatuna project, but I, I don't feel conflict, conflicted, but if anyone else does, I'm happy to step aside. Personally, I actually see that it's quite helpful, to be honest, but uh, anyone else, do you feel everyone comfortable with that? I just wanted to, the second that I want to ask questions. Absolutely. I'm sorry it's the end of the day, but I have to. No, that's okay. No, we just, we'll just, so, I just want to get that bit covered. Everyone happy with that? So we'll put that in there. And Lance, do you want to... Yeah, so um, Creative Waikato, as the report says, was set up um, some time ago. We used to have a, um, the ability to directly appoint a person to their trustees. Uh, they have recently reviewed that and um, believe that times have moved on and what they'd like to do is change to a more modern and best practice way of actually appointing trustees to um, their board um, so that we would actually have... Uh, 
the opportunity in their new trustee to actually appoint someone to their trustees appointment panel, which we've done for other things. Um, so that means um, we actually get a say in all the trustees that are appointed rather than just being able to directly appoint one. Um, so I don't see any major risks with that. And I um, and they, they as I said in the report, uh, they did have the ability to actually change the trust deed, which they've, they've gone ahead and done. And um, uh, I think you'll uh, be comfortable that Richard will appoint the appropriate person, whether it's an elected member or someone else. So. Uh, Councillor Gallagher. The world creative Waikato would have given us the courtesy of telling us mm. this was happening. How much do we give to them each year? Uh, Public about money? 90,000. So in return for the 90,000 grant, probably an ideal world, they would have come to this council and say, this is what we're intending to do. We're intending to amend our trust. This is our thought process. Do you have any uh, feedback? That's the, that's the polite thing. Secondly, I'll be moving a motion, um, and this is no disrespect to the Chief Executive, uh, that before the Chief Executive appoints the person to go on the selection panel, he seeks the advice of this committee. And, and because, you see, this is a really critical view, I think, respectfully, if you'd, come to, if you'd had the courtesy to come to us, Wai Creative Waikato, we'd have said, no, actually, that's kind of a governance matter. Frankly, the chair of this committee, the deputy chair, would be more than capable, in my humble view, of sitting on an appointments panel, just like you sit on a chief executive panel and other stuff. Right. So it's, it seems to me the critical question is, they have presumpt... <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> uh, forgive no, me, I know it's late in the day. No, I understand. I understand. You all right? Yep. Uh, look... I will make the comment that I was uh, surprised that I, I agree with completely yeah. what you've said. Yeah. I've made that point. Um, they have gone ahead and changed their trust deed uh, and um, more than comfortable, and Richard and I have talked about this, that uh, elected members are um, consulted with first before Richard actually makes any appointment or anything like that. So, um, so what I want to do is help me, Becca, I want to just, um, with regard to the, the yeah, follow in consultation right. with the community services, committee. you know, the, this committee, um, and um, I would also like us to send a message, whether that's a verbal message, because you will have all the diplomacy that I may not have, Mr. Lance, uh, <laughs> to say that we don't, you know, moving ahead. Yeah. We see ourselves as a stakeholder. They've got to be fearless. They've got to be independent. We get that, but but they do need to interact. Okay, and I, and I think I think this. I've already way, made that point. Yeah, but okay. I'll do it again. I'm happy to. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And and again, you sweetly say, "Oh yes, the chief executive is going to appoint as you want," yeah. but with a slight caveat under advice. Yes. Yeah, so if you want to add, and after the words "chief executive" um, in consultation with the community services committee, will appoint an appropriate person. Yes. Et cetera, et cetera. Yes. Yes. Can we do that? Up there already. Look at that, Martin. Yeah, I'm more than comfortable yeah. with that. I think yeah, that worked well. Yeah, and, you and happy with that? Yeah, no, I'm happy, and I think you know. That's a point well made. And I'm yeah. sure Richard would be very relaxed if you or Kesh in the end was on that panel. I, I get totally. that. You know, that's cool. That's good. Got to thank you, Martin. Uh, Councillor Pascoe. Yeah. Just a quick question, Chair. I know it's late. Um, does this also remove from Creative Waikato the um, previous councillors who, or uh, probably current councillors, who sit on the allocation panel? No. The funding allocation panels no, for both matter. Hamilton and Creative New Zealand funding. It's not my understanding. Okay, uh, would you? Uh, I'll, I'll clarify. You'll clarify and let, I'll let you know, Councillor yep. Rob. Yep. Yep. Okay, that's fine. Yep. Yep. All right. Anything else on there? That was no. pretty much it. All right. Um, let's move on to questions. Yes. Sorry. Question. Appreciate. Um, appreciate the feeling behind um, what Councillor Gallagher has raised. But they are changing the deed so that we don't have we don't have an input in appointing, and this is appointing, and it's not just the chair or the deputy chair; it's the committee. It's committee, yeah. So we're saying no, basically, to their request. No, can I clarify? Yeah. No. We're saying yes, but we're going to assist the chief executive. The chief executive. They've already changed the trustee. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. and yeah. I and I appreciate that yeah. point, but this is just us getting into the business that they want us out of again. And well, we they want us out of the money. We'll take the, we'll take a well, we'll, no. we'll be out of there. Yeah. We'll take the money. Thank you. No, look, I, I, I actually agree with Councillor Gallagher. I think it is prudent that elected members um, do actually have some input into 
um, the person that's appointed, and you may well want Richard to appoint an elected member to the appointments panel or not. It might be a senior staff member or, or someone independent to be on that appointments panel. So I think I, I, I don't have a problem with it, Councillor O'Leary, and I, I don't think we're getting into the kitchen with this. I think it's appropriate. Okay. Okay. Do we do this for, question would be then, do we do this for other organisations that we fund, other than our CCOs? Uh, we did it for the um, Community Lands Trust. Yeah, but that's sort of a little different. Like, in terms of... Um, because Creative Waikato gets funding from one of our community funds. Like, they have to apply, don't they? Yeah, not automatically. They, they, no, they yeah, that's may right. Not. So they have to apply, like, the Meteor, like Clarence, and all of them Absolutely. have Board of Trustees or Governance Groups. Do we do the same thing, then? Do we get involved in who they appoint on those? No, because it's not different? on their trust deed. OK, so, OK, which is why they wanted to change their trust deed. So wh why would we not want them to do that, then, if that brings them into line with everyone else we fund? Sorry, I'll just right. one to Angela's and then you're on. Um, well, we don't have any choice because they've actually put this in there. They've actually changed their trust deed. If we don't want to appoint someone, then that's fine. Um, they, I don't think they're going to be, you know, overly concerned about that. But they, they, they do, they do want to have a relationship with Hamilton City oh, Council. Of course, but so and, does everyone else. And they else have done a very good here. job. So, Mr. Chair, I'm, I'm sorry, I'm going to have to leave because I want to go downstairs to. No, absolutely. Biking. Are you happy with the answers? You, well, I'm mean, not happy, but are you? Oh, so it's yeah, like you've got an answer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Okay, thank, thank you. Thank you. All right, one, two, three, and if Sarah's still there, we've got a quorum. Good. Okay, uh, Councillor Gallagher, sorry to yeah, take look, off there, mate. I, I think you've answered it well, and I just think it's, as I said, it's a slight delineation between the role of governance and the, the chief executive, and it's about accountability. Look, and in the end, I think it's really good to have a person on the appointments panel. We may or may not choose a councillor, probably sorry. the chair or deputy, or we, we as, as Lance said, we may just identify a staff member, but at least we have some oversight. Uh, on the process, given the, the, the money that we give on behalf of the public and also given the important advisory role and crucial advisory role uh, Creative Waikato plays, and it's not in any way to unduly interfere, yep. but I think, I think we have a constructive role on that panel. All right. OK, let's keep it tight, guys. We've got right. uh, another question from Councillor Hamilton, and then we will move. Just a quick question. If, apologies if I've missed that, but the trust deed, did, did we see that when it got amended or changed? Uh, I've seen I've seen it since it's been changed. But has it been circulated to elected members? Do you know? No, I can do. Um, yeah. Um, okay. And do we have an MOU with them? No. Because uh, haven't we sort of in the past? I don't know. Officially, unofficially, defaulted them as our when we when we didn't have the public arts panel, we kind of defaulted to them in terms of credible partnership. Well, we help set them up, and uh, they are an independent body in their own right now, who actually is really a sector representative organisation like maybe Sport Waikato is, and uh, Community Waikato and, and organisations like that. So, um, in my view, things have actually moved on from when we crashed two other organisations together and helped facilitate that. I think they've shown maturity and I think they are an independent body that we do work closely with so I don't have uh, too many concerns with this um, we still and I think the advantage is that we actually get to be involved in the appointment of all their trustees now okay thank you no amendment or anything or? point of order yes certainly would you consider separating um, C, C, C for Charlie from and putting them separately? Yeah, I'm more than happy. More than happy to do that if it gives you guys some some more opportunity to... I mean, I'm happy to speak to both at the same time, but I'm yeah. just... That's, yeah, that's the way we will do it then, yeah, if you're thank cool you. with that. We can... Yeah, we'll need to move on a few things. Okay, well, okay, well, I'll move... Let me see. Now, how do I do this? Uh, move A, that we receive the report. Yeah. Um, and B, and that we approve, appoint... Uh, Councillor Me, Councillor Kesh, Councillor Robin, Councillor Dave, etc. And this will be C, isn't it? Yeah, so that'll be C. Do I have a seconder for those three and we will take them separately? Is that 
I mean, I'm happy to second A and B for you. Okay. Do we have a second of a C? Anyone? Anyone? This is a C is my well, motion two. I beg your pardon. Yeah. So I'll move that motion as well. Do we have? Yep. Consultation, consultation with the community committee. What does that mean? Does it? Will that come back to us for a, a decision? Yeah. Yep. A, a formal decision. Comes back to this committee yep. for a decision. Okay. And then yeah. So just be on the GM's report that um, that we receive. The we recommend that. Joe Bloggs is, you know, the person appointed to the committee. Will we have the opportunity to input into that before Joe Bloggs is recommended? Because that's the whole point, isn't it? Uh, we'd probably have a range of names. Yeah. So, and it'd be in public excluded okay. probably, and then okay. we'll release it into open once you've made a decision. A bit like we do for board appointments and things like that. So do we have a second for motion number two? Thanks, Ollie. Okay, all right, let's move into debate. Councillor Wilson, you'd like to, um, I won't speak at this point. So I'll uh, move that we receive the report and B and motion two at once, so we'll debate all three. No, I don't want to debate. <laughs> Okay, thank you. <laughs> no, it's appreciated. Um, all right, no more speakers. Uh, I'll move motion one. Are we doing A and B together or yeah. A and B together? Okay, show of hands of motion one A and B, please. Those in favour? Great. And those against? Unanimous. Including Councillor Thompson by Zoom? Yeah. Great. So motion was carried. Will you vote? Great, and you're staying around for this vote? Yep. Okay. Then we can't have that. You're absolutely right. Hang on, just stop, 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 stop. It's down to the second. All right, motion number two. Um, we are going to put this to the vote. Those in favour of the creative Waikato situation? Say aye. And those against? No, and with that, we will. Uh, we had no, none against motion number two. Is that right, Nessie, or against it, Sarah? Nope. Great. You were for it? Great. Thank you very much. Hey, thank you, committee. Um, we got through a pretty chunky meeting. Well done, everybody. Um, good work. We've got a lot more to go. Um, but, uh, yeah, and we didn't break the record. So meeting is closed at three minutes to five. Yeah. Thanks, Jeff. Thank Jeff.